Gamtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication. him that the last time he sent the money, it was not enough to buy all the provisions. Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rate. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. of owning your dream homes. EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms or our story buildings, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Sea View Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220. Or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gamsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gamsel, Yaibarom. Okay, I'm Yo, transfer us to transfer us to code Okay. What's that? You see the ID sort of. Ah, that's Sorry. I get it. Bro. Alba. Alba. Yes, but Allah service Ah, but you 
forest de biro gambia tonko na lo mbaria bere ka berin ko na fokato parisi ko do kino ka to ni fo bolon la be 56 branches mo la soda gambia ja ha ka gambia ko no ani gambia bantala bankol ko ko do ki ya bere ko do si fa si fa fo falindiro fo nyaadi lafta meme men na ko di to koto ni ko di maro jannam number 1 di ñonta an num fa nan nata anoda enterprise sotale wolam ñin di ko domorol fa nan kol fa nan be firale de daadi ma ni domorol di fa ne be teat gambia dawda yaalo ma fu fa kendol sotale ji ha e wo moy o diat ha appelen da ma ka ni na lafta ñelan kendol e bina yaalo bu ka ni la ko la barka ba yaalo ndel tiosano lo barka This is the brunch on Kerfatu, and I'm Lamin Chan. Today being March the 14th, 2020. And with me in the studio are, uh, the camera will pan a little bit, on the far left is Almame Fandintal, the spokesman of the United Democratic Party, UDP. And beside him is, of course, uh, uh, my usual co-panelist uh, and uh, presenter, uh, Nima Kamara from the University of the Gambia. And to my right, straight away is Pate Balde. He is the spokesperson of the National Reconciliation Party, NRP. And later in the studio, we will be joined by the communications director at the IEC, Joe Colley, who is on his way. Mm -hmm. So gentlemen and lady, welcome to the program. Thank you. We will kick off with, of course, a review of the news that I will start and share with the panelists before we get into their own uh, specialities here in the studio and the biggest news of course has been the presidential council meeting between uh, the Gambia and Senegal we will discuss that and we will also discuss about the measures the Gambia government has taken to prevent uh, the coronavirus from ever getting to the Gambia and then later we will also look at uh, some controversies surrounding um, um, I mean, a political figure from the United Democratic Party, the spokesman here, we will discuss all that. And the by election coming in Nyamina West, the United Democratic Party and the NRP officials here will also take part in uh, that conversation, as well as the IEC communications director, who will give us more insight as to the preparations, uh, whether it's going to be, you know, a first experiment of the paper ballot or whether, as the parties want, you know, the elections will stay with the marble. There is also a matter with our national football team, the Scorpions, who are supposed to play uh, Gabon on the 26th and 30th, respectively, in Gabon and Banjul. But that, along with other fixes, have been cancelled by CAF, the uh, Continental Body for Football. There are rumors that one of our players have, in fact, been infected uh, with the coronavirus. Uh, of course, this has been denied by the player himself and many other sources. We'll talk to GFA officials and perhaps we'll talk to the player concerned. So we have all this in the program that uh, we have on the go. So, very quickly, Nima, mm -hmm. the Presidential Council meeting, uh, NRP and UDP will join us in that. That is the meeting between the presidents of the Gambia and Senegal and their experts and their cabinets to discuss the bilateral and multilateral protocol, co I mean, cooperations between the two countries. It came at a time when there was heightened tension on the border between the two transport unions uh, about uh, Senegal not allowing Gambian vehicles to go with passengers and goods um, in, in this place. And then, of course, there is this matter reports that uh, Senegalese Zandarmaris chased a Gambian in our territory, arrested and shot him, and uh, about to put him on trial in Senegal. All those issues came before the pre or even during the presidential council meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, the president said they came out with a meeting with 
you know, very candid uh, agreements, mm -hmm. if you like. Um, but did you think uh, it's not clear? We heard that, um, although your details are not yet, that Seneg Air Senegal mm -hmm. will be domesticated in the Gambia. What would that mean, etc.? Mm -hmm. So, what do you understand from the meeting? Uh, first of all, I think it's good that you mentioned that details are not clear. Yes, because exactly. I haven't seen much that could inform anything that I could say on the matter. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's it's timely, if not for Senegal, but for the Gambia. Because a lot of issues have come out recently that suggest that our relationship with Senegal has always been in balance. And this is the time that Gambia really needs to articulate their interest in this relationship. But it's not just accepting things as Senegal would want, but really putting Gambia's interest on the table. So we hope that whatever the outcome was, that was something that Gambia could have gained from it. Uh, it turns out that some of the things that we have seen on social media, the domestication of domestic uh, international flights between Gambia and Senegal, mm -hmm. Uh, people question how beneficial it would be for the Gambia, mm -hmm. given that Gambia doesn't even have an airline. Mm -hmm. So if there is going to be a domestication, for whom would that be? And in this case, it's Senegal, who's benefiting from it. What that would mean is that Senegal may not necessarily pay the tax, mm -hmm. uh, and, and whatever access they needed from the airport would be given to them for free. Uh, so what do, what does Gambia gain from that? I well, think that's there are observations that perhaps airline tickets, as far as Senegal Air is concerned, would, would be cheaper, cheaper for Gambians. For, like Gambians. for example, if you look at the distance between Dakar and Ziegenzor, mm -hmm. uh, you have more flying time between Dakar and Ziegenzor, but the fares on Air Senegal is cheaper than Banjul Dakar, which is shorter. Mm -hmm. That's because there are two different territories, so the tariffs or whatever yeah. is different from the two. But then. Yeah, but but the, the, the thing with giving pe people half information and not full information, yeah. it doesn't help with the analysis. Yeah, yeah the thing is, uh, like we said, it's yeah, fairly this, early. This can just be questions the, that we ask. It's, we don't it's know fairly exactly. early. All the details and agreements will all be publicized, I know, in the coming days. Yeah. But what we understand is that, uh, well, these things are not new, I don't think, because the same sectors, the same ministers, the same directors, managing directors have, you know, have been to this meeting before in Banjul and basically agreed on these things, but mm -hmm. there were laps in the implementation. So mm -hmm. what I think the question for me is to ask is, are we now going to be sincere and practical in implementing these agreements? That's what is more important. I don't think there is anything new. Mm -hmm. And the details are sketchy, but both sides said they have come to terms and they believe that, uh, you know, the, I, the, the issues that have been um, <coughs> I mean, discussed will really uh, open a meaningful new chapter in the relationship between the two countries. So far, what do you understand from the meeting? Um, the relationship between Gambia and Senegal uh, is something that we cannot do anything about uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the historical and geographical factors. Mm -hmm. uh, what we need to focus on as Gambia is how do we uh, leverage this history and geography uh, to the best advantage of Gambia. Um, recently, and maybe we pay tribute and condolence to the late uh, Alaji Yaya Jalo, Jalo mm -hmm. who was the Deputy Executive Secretary of the Senegalo Gambian Secretariat. Um, this relationship has been going on, political, economic, uh, for centuries. Um, it's not for me now to argue a Pan-African argument that these are one countries, really. It's for uh, our political leaders and the Senegalese political leaders, um, the Senegalese political operators and the Gambian political operators, uh, the economic operators, to accept uh, that coexistence can be mutually beneficial and uh, we should not be playing games with each other. Uh, you know that the Senegalo-Gambian Permanent Secretariat, Secretariat is not in Senegal. It's in the Gambia. It's only in the Gambia. But it's headed by Senegalese. Yes. Um, this is okay. Okay. I don't know their financial arrangement, mm -hmm. but it would appear that Gambia bears the brunt of that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you have the OMVG, mm -hmm. also not in the Gambia, in but Dakar. only in Dakar. Yeah. I understand there are some Gambian personnel That's there. Gambia, yeah. I mean, all of these, again, are functions of our uh, foreign policy objectives as a country. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, yes, you have a presidential council. Mm -hmm. The taxpayers would like to know because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. all taxes, mm -hmm. however it is imposed, whether it's imposed by um, America mm -hmm. or it's imposed by Senegal or mm -hmm. it's imposed by the Gambia government, the people pay for it. Pay for it. Mm -hmm. So arrangements must always be uh, cost effective. Mm -hmm. They must also be uh, giving value okay. for money. So really, I, I think our relationship with Senegal, I think Nima has uh, characterized it very mm -hmm. uh, correctly, mm -hmm. that it has always been in balance, and we have always been on the receiving end. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, even during the First Republic, uh, we have been trying as much as possible, possible. Uh, to find a, a harmonious coexistence. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, then, mm -hmm. Gambia seems to have an upper hand, upper especially hand. in the economic yeah. uh, area. area. When we were schoolboys, yeah. you will remember, yeah. whenever you go to uh, Tefes or Half Dai, you see a lot of Senegalese shopping there. Gambia yeah. was like their like shopping their area. Their supermarket, yeah. Yeah, so, 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 so was uh, Guinea Conakry, yeah. so was Guinea Bissau. Everybody was coming here. Yeah. But now Senegal has undertaken comprehensive, massive reforms. reforms. And uh, as a result, they have now become the hub of West Africa. Okay, yeah. okay. So, so really, I, I think in dealing with them, mm. we should always try to see what is going to help the majority of Gambian uh, people. Because whenever we travel, we travel through Senegal. Okay, yeah. When we need a Schengen visa, we have to go. There. We have to go to Senegal. So we are tied with Senegal by a lot of factors, mm -hmm. but it doesn't stop us from negotiating from a position of strength, strength. and in the best national interest of the Gambia. Yeah, I just want to add something onto that. Yeah. Something just really provoked me. Uh, based on the little information we received, mm -hmm. you would, I mean, it's, it's, it's a wonder that what has been shared with us mm -hmm. is from the perspective of the Senegalese interest. It's okay. not from the perspective of the Gambian interest. interest. And that is what makes me really uneasy about these negotiations that happen. Uh, because what matters to the Gambia, for example, is access to the Senegalese market, yeah. first of all. Mm -hmm. But also that to have pathways to, to do business beyond Senegal. Because mm -hmm. these were conversations that came out yeah. with the border closures exactly, and all of that. Exactly. So you would expect that if Gambians are going to be given mm -hmm. feedback mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the meetings with the Senegal, yeah. it's it our go interest, out those to basic interests that are going to be really articulated mm -hmm. to say that this is what we brought on the table and this is what we achieve out of it. Well, but if, if we are hearing see, information about yeah. this is what Senegal have requested, and so whatever benefit we get from that becomes just tokenism. It's just Senegal uh, expressing its interest through Gambia and Gambia accepting it. Whatever little benefit Gambia gets is just a token. It's not yeah, a well, benefit. It's fairly early. The officials have just returned. Perhaps in the coming days we will hear the exact uh, arguments, ex uh, rather agreements that favored the Gambia too. Part of the of the NRP, um, what concerns you most? Uh, between the Gambia and Senegal relationship, and what do you think you expect the Presidential Council meeting to address? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to your co-presenter, and also I say thank you very much to my colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Alma Metal, a brother, and the rest of the mm -hmm. cameraman and any other person who is poor listening. Ah, you are I'm very, really very grateful to be part of you people today and to express uh, my view on this topic, which mm -hmm. is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Because not as not only as what they have said is timely, mm -hmm. but actually it's very very important. Because the Senegal and the Gambia, mm -hmm. we have a lot of things in common: mm -hmm. cultural, religious, bilateral, all economic. Most of the things that we, whatever is in, in the Gambia or is practiced in the Gambia is being practiced in Senegal. Whatever is being practiced in Senegal is being practiced in the Gambia, mm -hmm. and we are close neighbors and associates. Mm -hmm. So it is always very very important for one to consider your neighbors. What can you do with your neighbors? What can you do with your with your people whom you are sitting with? And those people actually you are representing, you should, you should be able to know what you are doing or what your representation for them, how you are representing them and what you are going to gain or what they will gain out of whatever you are doing. 
Yes. This why this uh, the Senegal is Gambia uh, relation this bilateral relation we have just heard from the from the from the radio or from the newspaper or not yet from the newspapers but at least from the radio and other yes. places. So so many areas has been discussed mm -hmm. bilateral economic transport mm -hmm. among others yes. and we have seen that what has happened in the last few months or few weeks between the Gambia between the Union between this was between the two unions. You see, you separation of powers. It was between the Senegalese Union and the Gambian. Uh, transport union. Mm. So I think this this were things that was af which was affecting many Gambians and affecting Senegalese you in one way or another, and it was confusing. Mm. But the relation between the Gambia and Senegal mm. actually is should be strengthened mm. in the best interest of all parties, not only one side. Do you think the Gambia have not been given too much to Senegal over the past years or so? Uh. Like the, the recent conflict between the two unions is an example. They wouldn't allow the Gambian vehicles to go to Senegal. And people say Senegal will always protect their economic interests, and that is uh, to strangle the Gambia from gaining any benefit from the, you know, the interstate uh, business that used to be our strength uh, in the 70s and 60s and the 80s. I think there are certain protocols or which you agree they bully the Gambia between between states, between countries, especially in West Africa. But they are not yeah. implemented. So it's what I'm trying to tell you now the implementation is what is important and actually the Gambian people if we see that we are not getting the interest mm. and there is a there is something that is affecting us it is for our business community mm. to come forward and come as as, uh, as a group and also try to discuss issues what is affecting them because you can't know what is really affecting those business people unless and until you talk to them mm. so the businesses between Gambia and Senegal we all know actually is somehow affecting the Gambian people in don't, one you, way or another. don't you think it takes a political decision to solve this problem like the, the, the transport union is wanted to take I mean retaliatory actions and the government here stopped them so the government went to Dakar and we are hoping that they would have resolved this matter totally uh, we haven't had you know, much in, from them you know, uh, what do you expect them to do particularly when it you know, in leadership concerned? you are there to guide mm. guide you must give guidance and you will not want actually conflicts this, as I said earlier, it is between two unions, the yeah. Senegalese Union and the Gambian Transport Union. Mm. So this was not between the two states. Yeah, but they all it was the not states. between the two states, although it was, but, uh, it was between the two transport unions. Yeah, but the so the best thing to, 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 to handle that, you have to go with maturity. So if you, re if, you, if you want to revenge, if I do something and you want to revenge, mm. in another way, normally people say revenge is the most painful thing. Mm. So if we have gone at that time mm. to that extent to revenge, it would have been very serious. For, for, for all of us. Okay. I think this is why mm -hmm. it was good that at least a policy be there or at least let us try to see how best we can guide each other. Mm -hmm. We can guide our own people while the Senegalese people also, the, the Senegalese authority can also guide their people. But, but clearly the Senegalese well, authorities are not guiding their people. I mean, what is uh, going on really is beyond even the laws of the Gambia and Senegal alone. Mm -hmm. This uh, talks to the ECOWAS integration perfect. agreements that we have. Yeah that uh, there shall be free movement of uh, persons and, and goods. goods within the ECOWAS. ECOWAS is 45 years old. Yeah. So if we are at this stage, one uh, legally organized entity in one country can impose its will mm -hmm. against uh, the interests of other business uh, groups in that other country. Mm -hmm. uh, everywhere in the world, mm -hmm. people have the right of self-defense. Mm -hmm they have the right of retaliation. Exactly. This is quite different from revenge or, or anything yeah, along those lines. Yeah. Even beyond that, I think what Pat is saying is contradictory in itself. If you're going to call for the unions mm -hmm. to articulate their interests, the only way they can deal with the other unions in another state is through negotiation. And if yeah. negotiation fail, mm -hmm. you expect them to retaliate in like, in, in like manner. Mm -hmm. uh, the only people who can channel this through diplomatic means is obviously the government. I think that's where well, for, for me, my take is that I have been observing this scene since uh, I was a kid. Relations between Senegal and the Gambia have never been even. Uh, I've realized that the Senegalese have always tried to play the big brother uh, tactics and strong arm tactics and bullying us in many, many, many aspects. Although I know there is a lot of uh, Gambians who really always disagree with their governments, whoever they are, on the Sadao de Jara we had people been mobilized, galvanized, opinion been galvanized against Senegalese domination when the Senegambia Confederation was here. I remember they were saying, how can Senegal's president 
be the president of the confederation with powers to declare state of emergency in the Gambia, etc., etc. And people have always highlighted that the Senegalese will never let the Gambia really have get any upper hand in our relations. So we have stayed like that. My observation is our governments have failed up to now to get Senegal to agree to terms that we are equal sovereign states. None of these governments have achieved it. Because okay, anyway, you would say, yeah, Jambe tried, you know, trying to go for tit for tat. But, you know, his method, we all know, is not all, all that uh, exemplary because he had always had problems with But my observation is Senegal always bully us. And we expect our government really to get them to agree to terms that we are equal sovereign states with respect to one another. This has not been happening. No, it's not for the government to get them to agree to terms. It's an international law that yeah, says would. states are sovereignly equal. Yeah. Um, the issue really is what are the treaties, what are the legal agreements that we have bilaterally with Senegal and multilaterally, and multilaterally in the form of ECOWAS, the region, yes. uh, Afri the even global, African Union. Yes, at the African Union level, at the uh, UN level, level, all of these are important treaties, uh, and the obligations are equally applicable to all the parties to these treaties. So, what we need to uh, emphasize on is our foreign policy. What is our posture towards ECOWAS? What is our posture towards the AU? Mm -hmm. What's our posture to the whole globalization phenomena? Mm -hmm. Because the advantages of being a small country must not be lost on us. Yeah. We must try to also emphasize uh, policies and uh, provide leadership in areas where, like uh, Nima has said, through negotiation, mm -hmm. you get what you want. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does not have to be equal in every respect. Mm -hmm. Senegal has uh, a population 10 times more than Gambia's population. Mm -hmm. Again, I mean, the human capital alone, mm -hmm. we just don't have. Mm -hmm. But areas where we have uh, uh, comparative advantage and competitive yeah, advantage, thing, we yeah. must press them so that uh, the Gambia benefits uh, ultimately. Exactly. Because a borderless uh, Senegambia, a borderless West Africa mm -hmm. works for everybody, okay. not only Gambia and Senegal, yeah. but Guinea, Guinea-Bissau and Mali. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I was going to say exactly the same thing. I think it's unrealistic to assume that Senegal would be looking after our interests. Senegal has its own interests to look after. And that's what all countries do. So, given the fact, it, regardless of the fact that we are neighbors, we are brothers They're and done. sisters, yeah. uh, we have the same history, it doesn't matter to a sovereign nation that is looking to provide for their citizens. The only country that can look after its own interests is the Gambia. And how you do this, obviously, uh, is being proactive mm -hmm. in your foreign policy approach. You don't necessarily have to. When you are reactive, it means that somebody else is calling the shots and you are just responding mm -hmm. to the shots. And in this case, Senegal is usually the one that is calling the shots. Mm -hmm. So Gambia needs to begin to realize what exactly it is that we want and make that their foreign policy objective and pursue it anyhow they can by uh, taking advantage of their comparative advantage. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think here is where I think this ICS one is very important with this policy especially between the Gambia and Senegal. The Gambian people need to be synthesized mm. to know what actually agreements yeah. or what are the policies between the, the Gambia Gambian and Senegal. Because the way and manner sometimes it has been interpreted. We are yet to hear uh, The way it has been interpreted sometimes mm. people did not know. The, the issue is there are a lot of synthesizations which include, which should include Senegal-Gambia relationship. Mm -hmm. Because it's very, very important. The, yeah. two, the two people should know we that this is what we what our leaders have agreed upon mm. or this is what our, our what, what is to be implemented the officials but have people just, just uh, go and just no, say we, we, we are have this bilateral that, relationship but yeah. actually it has not been spelled out to people and yes. the way this bilateral relationship come into being sometimes many gambian people did not know and the senegalese people also did not know we, so I, there I, is very it's very very important can i ask one question the, the can both. i ask one question uh yeah. mr Pade? Yes. if the gambia government's and representatives in this case the president and his delegation to go and negotiate on behalf of gambians yeah. matters issues that matter to them and they come back and they didn't share the information. How do you expect the Gambian people to learn about this? Is what I'm saying. Yeah, this, is what, this is what I'm but, calling but, but, for. I'm uh, calling for government to, to, to provide this is This is the responsibility of the government. They've just to yeah. the and, Gambian and people. Like this is what I'm saying. It was, it was a no, no, responsibility. Let us be clear. Yeah. The state does not uh, need sensitization. Mm -hmm. It is the state himself Duty. or uh, the state herself who actually 
sign this agreement. Mm -hmm. So they know the agreement. Yeah. And yeah. it is state uh, and, and, and state agents yeah. that are at the borders, and that are at the police station, yeah. and these are the people who know the laws of the land. Otherwise, uh, what's the use of having a border uh, border well, well, uh, guard? Yeah. Well, I think so. Really, I mean, I, I really think um, what Nima has just said was the point. It is our government to take uh, the, these responsibilities based on the laws that uh, govern our relationship. Because nobody is going is calling for a fist fight or go to the corner yeah. and start agitating. Yeah. You have to uh, make your relationship work for you, yeah. especially if it is based on the rule of law. For yeah, me, I, that's, 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 that's my point. I, I think uh, I think uh, uh, the government this 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 talks, for example, the government went there with experts in in the various sectors that the agreements have been made, like in the security sector, they are represented, economic sector, transport, every other detail, every other sector. They have top representatives there, so now, so one should assume that the implementation of these agreements will be much easier because the experts who should necessarily should implement them are those represented in in the, at the meetings. So, and I hope and I know that sensitization perhaps is part of their 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 mandate so that to get the people to know what has been agreed and how it will be implemented. Now let's move on. The other item in the news was uh, the supposed sacking of the army chief of staff, if you like. Uh, and then, of course, um, let, they have, actually, there have been two statements from the presidency about uh, about the, uh, the about Masanik Kintes Saki. Mm -hmm. The first one only stopped at the fact that it has been a uh, um, relief of his duties, and it's going to hand over to uh, Major General Yankuba Drame. Mm -hmm. And then there were speculations, especially when the Sirius himself appeared at the airport, uh, at the ceremonies welcoming the president after the announcement that he has been sacked and even the date of the i mean sacking was 5th march so even after a week uh, he was still functioning as the cds as we have seen in the videos at the airport mm. but on friday another one came which seemed to well seemed to clarify masana is indeed relief of his duties as cds but he will be deployed as our representative in china yankuba will act as cds and mamar chan will be deputy cds Huh? Boyan. Who's Boyan? It's Boyan, yeah, the deputy. Deputy, is it Cham or Boyan? It's yeah, Boyan. and Boyan will be deputy. It's Boyan. Okay, so now, hmm. uh, what do we understand? Um, well, we are not military terms. What we tried to piece together was, was at the time of the arrival of the president, the, uh, Masane was just doing his last, um, last duties State because function. there was no handing over the time. Hmm. Or it, was it uh, that at some point, uh, the president was changing his mind. What do you understand? So he appears after his sack. Is that what you're saying? After he was supposedly removed, he appeared in the official function at the airport, welcoming the president in full uniform. But not as the CDS. Well, he was CDS. He was CDS reg regalia and regalia. everything at the airport. Was it because he I'm, had I'm, not I'm formally not, I'm not handed over? I'm not familiar with this. I just want to Well, of course, I tried the military to explain it, but they wouldn't talk but about it. But the sack and said with immediate effect. Yeah, it, it, with, with fifth, fifth March, it said. So even the announcement came mm -hmm. after uh, the, the sacking. Well, weeks, days after the sacking. That was curious. Mm -hmm. But even after the announcement, he was still functioning. And CDS, as we've seen in the videos at the airport. And remember, do you understand this? Well, well, well I tried uh, to get a sense of for, it from the for, military. For me, uh, really, I think um, uh, there is a need for us uh, to readjust mm -hmm. the architecture of governance. Mm -hmm because uh, the highest uh, military officer of the country, mm -hmm. uh, there should be a clear path mm -hmm. uh, for his removal by the commander-in-chief. Mm -hmm. Because uh, like you were saying, any lack of clarity uh, leads to speculation. To speculation yes. And uh, to see the same guy in full uh, regalia at uh, presidential return to the Gambia, mm -hmm. um, we have had and we have seen in the history of uh, the Gambia and Africa mm -hmm. that um, uh, uh, returns mm -hmm. can be very fraught uh, with uh, complications, complications, especially where the military is still going through some uh, reform and readjustment. Yeah. So really, I, I think, I mean, uh, for the sake of uh, the peace and order of the country, uh, certain offices uh, need uh, <laughs> to have a clear mm -hmm. description yes. as to how offices are uh, 
succeeded, how they are removed, mm -hmm. and uh, the importance of the elective voice of the people mm -hmm. to participate yeah. in these processes. I mean, um, uh, globally, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's recognized that uh, the highest military officer mm -hmm. uh, can and should be removed by the commander in chief, chief based on uh, good reasons, yes. uh, go based on good practice. practice. But let those practices be based on law, law. and uh, it is clear so that uh, people don't get into this speculate. uh, speculation. Yeah. Yeah. So was it's it the announcement uh, uh, no. that was confusing? Because it didn't change the fact that Masane has been removed, but then here was one announcement, we didn't say much, and the second one seemed to say basically, in, in between Masane was still serious. What did you understand? Thank you very much. I got both announcements over the air. It was the first announcement when it came, I think I first get it from Q, Q Radio. Yeah, it was Q from State House anyway. Yes, but they said it is from State House. Yes. So when it says only he was released mm -hmm. from his duties yes. and left uh, to the general uh, drama has mm -hmm. been will be yes will be will be will be appointed or has been appointed no he never said appointed he said so now hand this over to uh, hand over yeah. so now yesterday the same news again in this on the same topics yeah. came differently he came to by saying that he is being redeployed mm -hmm. in the foreign service yeah. as the ambassador in china yeah. understand yeah. however the reasons of his relief from duties as, as CDS has not been spelled out. Because many right. Gambians have been removed or relieved from their positions, but actually reasons, ad, reasons are not advanced. Yes. The reason why they are being removed is always in doubt. It's it always, has always been kept there. Yeah, and this should at least this is something that government should try to look into I and see. try to practice at least to be able to tell the Gambian people. Mm. You see, not even everything, but at least although there are Certain things, but these rumors. By law, do, do, does the president or anybody explanation on his sake? No, it's administrative justice okay. that uh, if you are occupying a position, especially very high positions, mm -hmm. uh, you always have a reason uh, to be relieved of the position. And I don't know because uh, it, it's, uh, he's beyond still. That, uh, be, beyond that, it's also a good practice in good governance for people to access information because information. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is, do, do no, does president owes people to explain why I, I, I why I change my cabinet? But by why a I matter of the principle, they it should. Has, and and I, I was going to ask you: so shouldn't we require? Huh? It has not it been has the not practice. Been, no, not, well, shouldn't we require mm. the president to be no. clear? What mm. normally happens is the laws under which. The president can act to appoint or dismiss are stated clear, but the reasons that's left to him, no law, no law can force it. The do. point is, if the president, no, if no, the no, president no, no, appoints yeah, people, yeah. Mm. I'm just coming in. If the yeah. president appoints people, yeah. usually their qualifications are spelled out, and we are told, uh, if not directly, that this person has so and so and so qualifications, and we assume it's based on those reasons that they are being appointed. Yeah. So we. A justi the justification for their appointment is given to us. Mm. Therefore, if you're going to relieve them of their position, we expect that mm. there should be reasons advanced. Well, and this, this, is, this is in line with... with well, government. this is civil government service, service, but this is not civil service. The government, uh, I mean, the, the, no, but, the but president makes political is, appointments. He doesn't, is, he doesn't need anybody's explanation. No, no, it's, it's critical because uh, he is moving from uh, chief of defense staff mm -hmm. to, to the, the ambassadorship of China, the most important country yeah. Uh, to Gambia in terms of uh, diplomatic relations yes. and the second yeah. largest economy in the world. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the question whether he is actually sacked or not, mm. I think also needs to be uh, very clear because. But this it's is obvious that he's been sacked as serious. No, no, he's not. He's not being sacked. This as is serious. Really. No, no, no. He's not been relieved of his whatever that. Means. Yes. Yes. But he is continuing his service, service. of the Gambia government. Gambia government. Yes. So you can play different roles in the Gambia government, yeah. and as long as um, uh, the laws are clear as to how you transition from one role to the other, mm -hmm. I think it's extremely important. Like Nima said, like uh, my brother, he explained Pate. why. Huh? He explained why. I... Yeah, because it's good uh, practice administratively. Mm -hmm. Administrative justice demands that every decision that is made in government mm -hmm. in the public space, you give reasons. If you don't give reasons. People are going to think that you are being whimsical or you are being. And it makes uh, accountability very difficult. But because if, how do we if, know if that, if for example, this no. person is relieved because of something that they may have committed? Mm. For example, with my father, there have been speculations of corruption. 
but then he has been reappointed again after that. So say for example, this is somebody who has been accused of corruption, who has been, uh, I mean, there's evidence that he's involved in corruption and that was the reason why he was relieved of his, if he was going to be redeployed mm -hmm. into another position, then people now have cause to question his credibility, right? Uh, yeah. But if that information is missing, it makes accountability very difficult. Then we cannot hold anybody to account. And speculation doesn't help in governance. Well, I, 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 I actually want to establish whether by law the president has a duty to explain to people why he replaced lawyer Dabo with Tangara or with Aisatu or why he replaced uh, Omar Jallo with uh, Fatou Fabure, where he needs to explain to the people if there has not been any issue. Um, if there has not been any issue, yes. still yes. Uh, there is the point that Nima is making mm -hmm. that it is good governance mm -hmm. to give reasons for decisions. Okay. And it also helps the accountability process of let's, the state. Let's yeah. visit, let's visit, let's, let's revisit Jammeh's book on that. Yeah. Jammeh said he wouldn't explain uh, why he sacks people, because if he does so, people will <laughs> take up pick sticks and beat that person up, meaning, of course, in no, his own style. But, but everyone knows that Jammeh was a liar, <laughs> you know, and no, he was, no, yeah, he was the most rubbish uh, president that and this he, country he has just, ever had. He just go. said here that he's not a, a very good example. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Yeah. Let's but move on. Just to reiterate your point, I think it's important also we understand if there is no law, then maybe we should advocate for a law to be in place where... Exactly. I, I think that's, that's a very important yeah, point yeah. because to this is what, what it is all about. When you talk about the rule of law, yeah. it takes away discretion, it takes away whims and fancies of, yeah. The, yeah. of the ultimate decision maker. And I think it's extremely important mm -hmm. for us to understand that that if a constitution says that this is how a president is to be elected, mm -hmm. this is the time it takes to assume his office. Mm -hmm. uh, if we are going to have a transition from one uh, presidency to another one in a peaceful way, we would have been spared the impasse of 2016-2017 uh, mm -hmm. because there were no clear pathways as to how, the, how does the president assume office. What, when does his powers kick in? Mm -hmm. What is the transition period? Okay. Apart from the uh, two, uh, 60 days, within 60 days of being elected, he should assume the office. Okay. So these are all things that we need to revisit in the architecture of our governance mm -hmm. so that uh, this country is properly governed. That's because good. we cannot afford this kind of you know, speculation mm -hmm. and spend you know, Saturday brunch uh, wondering, wondering you know, okay. whether Yaya Jame was the uh, good uh, standard on this kind of behavior exactly no i think in the new draft constitution of the guy of this uh the draft one mm -hmm. the uh, the powers of the president to remove or to to remove the army chief of the best staffs mm -hmm. i think will be limited mm -hmm. the, so mm -hmm. that one is yeah. already it is, it, is, it is part of the recommendations oh. that the army chief of the best staff cannot be removed be by the president yeah. no longer be removed. Yes. No. If, the well, if, if, if the new constitution come into be into force, whose whose duties will be to appoint the uh, CDS? Uh, the this, the president will will have the powers to to uh, to, to appoint, I believe. But at least to remove. Yes, there will be a committee, a the civil service, the national assembly, among others. There ah, will be such okay. committees. So okay. when that comes into force, mm. such things may be will okay. not happen. Now let's move on to something, uh, some sort of controversy, and I think Almame, you must be ready now because this is one area that uh, your party come under great scrutiny over the last couple of days. Um, the deputy party leader, Ajiyam Sekels, mm -hmm. um, shown on video in Nyani, telling people uh, that in a comment that most people regard as tribalistic or instigating tribalism in politics. She was quoted, among other things, as saying that the people of Nyani must help their own and because he is Mandinka, Mandinka forms a majority in the in the country and uh, the people must support Dabo, not because he's one of them, but because he's a Mandinka. Uh, uh, apparently, Ajiyam herself admitted that these comments will be categorized as tribalism and that's how a lot of people have seen it around the world, Gambians that is around the world. You yourself and your parties come out to say this does not in any way represent the UDP's policy or standing. That is just a passing comment from a person who's not even known as somebody who projects tribalism, etc. But all the same, Almame, people think she could have done better than this. She probably shouldn't have talked about that in that manner. Well, um, like I said uh, to, to uh, people who ask, uh, I really think on the storms. 
political systems, whoever is on it. Um, one must make sure that uh, there is no ambiguity or there is no misunderstanding of your messages. Um, the deputy party leader said very clearly uh, at the beginning of her comments that she knows some people may perceive this as being tribalist, but she is going to say it regardless. And she went on to say that uh, in Mandinka, uh, even though her Mandinka is not uh, perfect, mm -hmm. that's, that's not uh, to excuse mm -hmm. the, the, the comments, that Molnyanta um, Ebadiya uh, Fasa, and went on to say in Wolof that Usenu Dabo Domi Sosela. Uh, yeah, I'm so sorry, Papa, I'm so sorry. And uh, comments like that. Mm -hmm. um, for me, uh, when I heard it, well, I, I brush it off. I don't think I'm, uh, uh, when I hear people say charity begins at home, mm -hmm. I feel like uh, uh, they, are, they are propagating an agenda of either that only that home uh, should uh, enjoy the charity. Or similarly, when the wall of say suma bo pa mo mo genal kuneka lulu minute na damala bani damala bani like that. Um, badi ya fasa in Mandinka is uh, is similar to these uh, expressions. Exactly. And uh, the reaction that you talked about, mm -hmm. I think, is not uh, for me is not uh, a surprise, mm -hmm. because if we agree that uh, the major premise of uh, political life is that in a democracy the majority rules mm -hmm. uh, what all political leaders would do mm -hmm. is to try to get that majority mm -hmm. now the existence of that majority mm -hmm. is always uh, precarious mm -hmm. is always subject to attempts mm -hmm. to delegitimize it mm -hmm. this is not starting today um, when uh, the People's Protectorate Party mm -hmm. was formed mm -hmm. in the uh, 60s, mm -hmm. it was because the elite in Banjul mm -hmm. thought that democracy or uh, independence mm -hmm. means only for the people in Banjul. Mm -hmm. When the majority is not in Banjul. Mm -hmm. So this attempt to delegitimize the majority in the Gambia has been going on for a very long time. And uh, it's not uh, surprising to those of us who are in the UDP. Uh, what we are not going to accept now is uh, to apologize uh, for the majority that we have in the Gambia mm -hmm. and to suggest that uh, just because a Mandinka supports a Mandinka political party mm -hmm. that is uh, tribalism mm -hmm. I think uh, that is an argument that uh, we are not going to uh, accept from anybody mm -hmm. of course uh, people express their view that oh this is uh, tribalism mm -hmm. uh, I don't I don't agree yeah but Alman, um, when the Constitution or the electoral law said no party should be based on tribal or ethnic uh, or religious lines now you have a deputy leader of the party going out and said you should vote for a Mr. Dabo because he's a Mandinka and you are Mandinka. You cannot definitely divorce this from looking for votes based on tribal lines, which is exactly what people are condemning. Yeah, but um, I, I was trying to explain mm. uh, the context. Yes. The context is that um, the deputy party leader was in the uh, home mm. Tough mm -hmm. of the uh, leader of the UDP, mm -hmm. and uh, she had these uh, choice words and messages to give. Mm -hmm. I recognize that she herself recognized that this may be perceived that way. Yeah. But you know, we are seeking for votes. He, she is uh, seeking for votes for the UDP. Up to the point of, uh, you know, ignoring or sidestepping uh, any I, kind of rules. I don't know. I don't know if she is ignoring anything. She she clarified that I think that okay. some when, people will take this as a tribal uh, argument. Yes. You see, when when Jamme 
uh, made a pronouncement against the Mandingos in 2016 and 15 that uh, he was going to kill the Mandingos, he was going to put them six feet. He was condemned for saying something against the Mandingos as collectively. I'm so I'm, I'm, in the same I'm going vein, to intervene if somebody, and say, in the same you're, vein, you're if somebody comparing is, two things that are... No, 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 if somebody campaigned same. for people to vote for Mandingos, no, 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 he didn't mm. campaign for that. He said that Basically, what she President, said. Uh, 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 what is it called, the uh, party leader of the UDP mm. is a son of the soil there. Yeah. And they should support him mm -hmm. based on their affinity with him. Ethnically. Ethnically. Both. So if people of Fony said, well, we, we have to support Jammeh because he's a Jola, we condemn them. Um, that is uh, your right, that is your privilege. But I'm, I'm just uh, saying that, uh, please, let us understand the context. Mm -hmm. Here is one of our uh, senior uh, political leaders who happens to be a woman mm -hmm. uh, on a tour uh, during Women Day, Women Week, uh, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. Uh, she took the political platform and she said certain things mm -hmm. and she herself mm -hmm. uh, check it out on the box yeah. because uh, for me the argument goes way uh, further than this mm -hmm. that this attempt mm -hmm. to delegitimize the majority that is existing mm -hmm. in the Gambia mm -hmm. is something that we should have a frank discussion about mm -hmm. because in some ways uh, when the coalition 2016 was being formed, mm -hmm. it is again, it was an attempt to push away mm -hmm. the majority. They say, okay, you have to come wearing a party cap. You have to be a, a standard bearer for a party mm -hmm. or an independent candidate. Mm -hmm. And uh, you go, you bring your 70 delegates, mm -hmm. and then you go for a, a primary contest. After you win the contest, you have to resign from your party mm -hmm. or from your independent status. So somebody who was uh, brought together, uh, brought up within a party, who has no political base, mm -hmm. uh, but because the party presented him, mm -hmm. he became the successful candidate mm -hmm. uh, for the presidency. Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, I would have thought, we say yes, the flag bearer for UDP has been successful in this primary. Mm -hmm. Let us all follow the UDP okay. and have a party-led coalition. Mm. This ha is been had all over the world. Mm. The reason why others mm. from the other political parties voted for this uh, 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 current president of the Gambia is the understanding that strategically we have a very good chance of defeating Yaya Jami the if we yeah if the UDP is leading it's this leading. effort. Okay. Right. So now, so I'm just trying to explain okay. uh, now uh, now she didn't stop within, the, within she this didn't, context. She didn't stop there. She said okay, you know of course I like I said I've always myself said tribe origins of leaders, politicians have always been discussed elsewhere. It, it's only too sensitive in the Gambia than in Nigeria. In Nigeria, every day the papers write, uh, Buhari and his Fulanis are annihilating our people. The Igbo is going dis to dis dis discuss there. But she didn't stop there. She said, um, some people have worn the Mandinka clothes, won the elections, and after they removed that cloth and now put clothes of the Fulani and the Sarholes. He certainly must be referring to President Barrow. Is that uh, a good manner, or is that what's expected of uh, a political leader? Um, to, to now to no, 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 now to 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 to, to mask criticisms. Uh, even if President Barrow did that, what should it should 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 that? Uh, I mean, bo I have to call it. Should not make everybody do it? Um, for me, uh, really, I'm saying that uh, this is. Uh, storm in a teacup. In a teacup. It's a passing I comment. I am saying, no, no, I'm not only is a passing comment. I'm <laughs> saying that let us uh, develop historical consciousness okay. about our politics yes. and see how these things uh, in the long term are uh, going to uh, going uh, pan out. But, but really, uh, for the avoidance of doubt, yeah. there is nobody in the UDP yeah. leadership exactly. who espouses or want oh. to suggest yes, that a uh, tribal agenda is what the politics of this country should be about. about. That's very good. And you said, of course, 
this will be factored in your official messaging so that you know of course oh, absolutely, things, absolutely. Things that are going to cause I mean I know I have said controversial <laughs> things in absolutely. my time yeah, yeah. I have said all kinds of things in my time NRP is definitely always in opposition to the UDP or perhaps in the recent past because they have been together what do you make of that reply to Ajiam Seket's comments. Do you agree with everybody? That Thank you very to? much. As, uh, as just has been mentioned, You're in, our, everybody. Just in, our, in our constitution, yeah. in the IEC principle of laws, electoral rules, these yeah. uh, ethnic or tribal issues. And in fact, I think the deputy party leader is member of the IPC, that's the inter-party committee. Yes. We are actually, this issue of tribalism, mm -hmm. the inter-party committee is trying mm -hmm. To their best to see that actually the issue of tribalism is being oh, but was out it of tribalism? Do you agree that it was a tribal comment? You understand? It's you what I'm saying. No, so, I, do you agree or not? You no, know, when you talk about Nyani, I'm just trying to say, when you talk about Nyani, that because he went to Nyani and he's, uh, he's the, home, uh, the home village of the party leader, Nyani comprises of different tribes. Mm -hmm. It is not only Mandinkas in Nyani. Mm -hmm. You can't, it is very difficult to go to a village in this country, you find only one particular tribe yeah. in that village. Okay. So okay. therefore to mention this in anywhere in this country, mm -hmm. no wrong. matter where, wrong. should not be by, by we politicians. Mm -hmm. Not okay. only okay. by we politicians. So in other words, you are condemning the yes. just, just come to the point. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Alright, now... Um, you cannot skip me on this. You know ah, I will have okay, something to say. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, I'm not skipping you. I will, I will come. Okay. So but what's you your can, take on this? Yeah. So first of all, I think we need to make a clear distinction between what tribalism is and what tribal politics means. Tribalism is where a particular tribe subordinate other tribes by looking at themselves as the superior being. Mm -hmm. Tribal politics is when people seek political support or votes based on tribal affiliations. Mm -hmm. So well, these are two different Where are those Ajiyam Sekis comments falling? In it's tribal point. politics. Ah, okay. And again, I think it's sometimes Gambians, we fail to have the most difficult conversations. It's so simplistic to say, see Gambia first, see Gambia first. Mm. Gambia first, who does it benefit? These are questions that, important questions that people ask. Mm. If people don't feel themselves as highly represented in mm. government, mm -hmm. if people don't see themselves as accessing mm. uh, equally resources of a country, if people don't see themselves reflecting in the way that governance is done, they are going to seek ways through which they are they, they're going to want to have access to this. So let me just break it down, yeah. break this down quickly. Every individual who votes ba votes based on an interest, mm -hmm. whether you are voting to advance women empowerment or you are voting to advance protection for the environment, or you just want a liberal economic system where private ownership would be. Some people vote because of um, to they want to have cultural brokers within the government who are going to look after their their interests and again because we have a representative democracy mm -hmm. every person you see wants representation mm -hmm. you still so didn't tell me Nima, was, was, I am, I am, was I just want to build a context here because mm -hmm. it, it, I told you this is a difficult conversation okay. and sometimes you can be accused of saying things that you do not necessarily mean yeah, yeah. Um, so what I'm trying to say here is that if say for example somebody is telling someone uh, to vote for somebody, you ask, why should I vote? Mm -hmm. And Yam Seker's response to that question is, you vote simply, uh, simply because this person is your brother. Mm -hmm. The expectation from that aspect mm -hmm. is that since this person is your brother, if he comes into power, he would have your interest at hand. That is the, that's the response to that question. Mm -hmm. But that is also where the problem emerges. Mm -hmm. And so the problem is not with tribal politics. The problem is how governance is done. Mm. Because if this expectation is there and people come into power, mm. and now what they do is advancing in nepotism, mm. putting their own brothers in office, uh, in positions, yeah. patronage, mm. uh, but also that resources are distributed on that basis, mm -hmm. then you see that the problem is not with tribal politics. It's nepotism, mm -hmm. it's patronage, mm -hmm is unequal distribution of resources that reinforces these tribal sentiments. Okay. And this is why I tell people, mm. tribal politics is not necessarily a problem. Mm. People, it's a cultural thing to want your brother to be in a, in a good it's position. It's inherent in Africa. It's inherent. In, if you go to any business owners yeah, here, it's the, same in the Kenya. biggest ones, it's their brothers, it's their uncles, mm. it's their aunties that they are employing in position. Yeah. So it's not necessarily different. Yeah. So the problem is not that. The problem is nepotism. Mm -hmm. The problem is unequal distribution. The problem is 
uneven representation mm -hmm. in terms of access to resources. If you're able to deal with that, yeah. then it will become it will make sense to Gambians to see Gambia first. But if that is there and mm -hmm. you are see you are telling people to see Gambia first, they don't see themselves in Gambia first. Good. Well, whether or not this answers the question that at the Yam's um, comments were travels. It's not straightforward. <laughs> no, it's not straightforward. But now somebody yeah, has joined I, I us. I think Lamin likes to simplify things. <laughs> yes, you know, but you know, it's not straightforward. Yankas are like that. They like to simplify. It. Okay. Now, Joe Colley of the IEC, this is the communication director and responsible for training, has just joined us. Joe, we were going to talk about the updates on the by election coming in Yamina West, and we're going to have uh, Almame and Pate on that too. But first, let me put you on the spot. Uh, what happens? If a party or politician has been seen to be canvassing votes on tribal lines, what do you do as IEC? Do you dis de register the party or you ban the politician from, from ever mounting the political platform? Yes, Lamin, um, as usual, um, I always refer to, you know, like this, the, the country is governed by laws and uh, so so also elections. Maybe you want to put down your microphone a little bit. Yeah, so us. also okay. elections. Yes. Like um, first and foremost, you know, like uh, Section 60 of the Constitution mm -hmm. tells us exactly how political parties should be constituted. Yes. Of course, not on ethnic or tribal lines and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, if you go to 105 as to how they are supposed to be formed and the like, that's the modus operandi of how they should be formed. Okay. And of course, if you go to um, code on election campaign ethics, you know, exactly, which yeah, is where the, these yeah, about. these are some of the things that I mean we are trying to uh, run away from mm -hmm. because, like, um, we don't want to bring you know tribal divides and things like that because we've seen examples. Exactly. Because uh, I don't want to name countries yeah. and yes. name places because, yeah. like. If you look at certain countries, even in the in you know in our sub-region, mm -hmm. like uh, parties are formed in the basis of tribe, yeah. and you know, if during elections, you know, it's usually very very tense, you exactly. know, in those areas. Exactly. So that is why, mm -hmm. like, uh, we try to uh, encourage exactly. you know politicians and political parties to desist from 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 such. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go straight to the point because we don't have time. Uh, the by-elections in yes. Nyami West is, is on the 16th April. The nominations open on the 30th April. Um, so far, I have two parties here, the UDP and the NRP. I want to ask first before I come to you. Uh, Almame, is the UDP going to contest? The like, will the UDP contest the elections? As we speak, we are considering uh, the options contesting uh, in uh, Yamina West or not. You have not yet... Uh, we haven't, we haven't made a decision uh, yet mm -hmm. um, because uh, you will know the last time mm -hmm. we were in tactical alliance with our with uh, partner, the NRP, NRP mm -hmm. and we did not put up a candidate. Yes. Uh, nonetheless, um, uh, the GDC was uh, quite competitive and mm -hmm. they won the seat. Yes. So we are we are looking at the options and uh, uh, seeing uh, what 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 would be the best interest of the Gambia uh, at this stage. So we we haven't made a decision yet. You were in tactical alliance or whatever it called because some people said I was in any, but you did not put up a candidate against NRP because you considered them to be members of Coalition Twenty Sixteen. Um, and, but then how yeah, but it was not only there it was in Woolley and Sarikuna. other places I mean, I mean I don't know why why you you no you I mean people, people always I mean you have called tactical people, alliance people are saying this uh, the people's democratic organization for independent social doesn't think it was a tactical alliance as such well we, Some did, of not, them. we did not put up we did not put up a <laughs> okay candidate. you didn't put up a candidate that's correct. A candidate. that's correct and now, elections are coming again we will put up candidates and you will see okay. our <laughs> okay now now you are saying that your party have not added point for it um, but then let's let's let before i go to nrp now you don't seem to be very much rosy relationship with nrp um are you going to still consider this suite of coalition 16 and not put up a candidate there or uh, like you said you have not even discussed uh, whether to put up a candidate. How could it be for gdc this time i'm coming there um we we are discussing this matter as i say i was supposed to be in the executive Okay. We haven't made a decision. Made yet. A decision. This is this is my uh, 
Put it on the next issue. Then, uh, P, you lost the election to the GDC, even though UDP sympathized with you, and so, sometimes maybe their supporters voted for you, still lost to the GDC. The GDC came here last week and said that seat is surely theirs. Whether or not any party supports them, they can win it uh, fair and square on their own merits. Are you going to contest elections? Uh, as far as we are concerned, NRP, as you know, the whole Gambian people knows that we always participate. We are always waiting and we are always there, we are always strong. Are you going to, we, uh, are you going to What we are doing is, as far as NRP is concerned, mm. we have our party militants in the constituency. Mm -hmm. These party militants are discussing mm -hmm. and to recommend or to select. If they come forward with any recommendation mm -hmm. that this is the person we want, no, so that, that we, are, we, are, we, are, we are not the one who, are, who is going to so choose that a candidate. My question. It's not a person of who is going to contest. Of I'm, course, saying, saying, I'm contest. telling you the system. Yeah. I'm not right. just to tell you that we'll no, contest I, I, or not I'm contest. Well, yeah. We are waiting and we are also in, in touch with them. Mm. And they are also doing their groundwork. Yeah. You understand? This is how how a party works. We, we, what I'm saying, I'm saying. What I'm, I'm just trying saying to say who, is, as who are you I going said earlier, I said we are always ready. Yes. We are always ready to you contest. Are ready to contest. This now, there is, there's, there's this talk that you are now very much uh, working closely with the NPP of President Baro, who we are, we, we've been told that uh, want to perhaps use the Nyamena West as the litmus test for the party. And you are the people who are trying to work closely with them. Are you going to work with the NPP you and know, put up a N United candidate? NRP has not, in, in fact, not only NPP. NRP has been working with parties. But, but now in 20 or 6, NRP joined the UDP here in a coalition. Now you are more close in to NPP. Is that, is that uh, correct? Just allow me. Any party, we are ready to work with any party. That so, so even if the UDP put up one... You any party that consult NRP, our doors are open. If you mean if UDP... We are, we are, our doors are open. Why not? We are, we are open to, for discussion with any party. I am... It's about discussing. We cannot tell any party that we are not going to discuss. But your, pa there your, must be your party has made it clear that you don't, you wouldn't mind even you to back so you to, to the to NPP. Come, so that's what yeah, if the NPP saying. want to contest, yes, what will happen? If they want to contest the seats, yes. and we see that if NPP and RP versus each other, yes, it will create. A, uh, it's, it's also discussed. So you are more and close to NPP than NRP. NRP. NRP is going to contest the seat or not? Yes, you understand. We are prepared, waiting for our people, uh, depending on what the outcome will be. You know, we, as I said, we don't choose candidates. For I people. know that. What I'm saying is, no, no, we you are, work, are you working with NPP too? We to, have to. not worked with NPP as a now. Officially, we have even at, at NRP as an executive, we have not even set mm -hmm. for a, for discourse about this. Most more with another party, okay. we have not even set because our most of our executive members were away. Yeah. So, but so you said if NPP, if NPP express interest, you're gonna back them. I am saying, yeah. NPP with any other party once. We are ready for discussion. Whether yes. we will come to terms or not, we our doors are. But personally, not with GDC. You if know? GDC want to discuss with NLP, whether we are I, going I, to put I, a candidate I against it, that it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. I I I'm saying what I'm trying to say is that our doors are all, we have open door policy. Okay. We are ready to discuss. So what do you make of GDC? Discuss it and come into terms. It's not the same. This is, this is a secure area for them. They're going to sweep the polls there. GDC. Yes. You see. This is their what opinion, but as, as far as we are concerned, if NRP put up a candidate, we will take the seat. There is no doubt. Ah, okay. This yeah. seat belongs to NRP. Joe, how far are we in the preparations? Very quickly. Yes, we um, like um, the window has been opened for the collection of um, nomination forms. Mm -hmm. and uh, So far, how many nomination forms have gone? I wouldn't be able to tell you, but I know because, like, we have two areas. Yeah. People can either collect from ah. election house or Janjamuri. or Janjamuri. So the collection is going on. Uh, I know people have collected. I wouldn't know exactly how many, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we are preparing. And um, at the IEC, we are not taking things lightly now. As I'm speaking, like um, I'll be one of the assistant returning officers. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so we are, we're going to have two, and uh, we're going to deploy our, our our staff there, you know, to and our regional officers to 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 conduct the election. So we're not we're not taking it, we don't we're not um, putting it to chance. So from the directors down, you know, of course the returning officer will be a commission member, mm -hmm. and then um, two of us, the directors, will be the assistant returning officers, and then our presiding officers will be. Um, direct some of the directors and uh, assistant directors. So we're taking our regional officers to to man the I mean the election. So okay. yeah. So it's it's uh, uh, we're taking it very very seriously. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's it is of course mm. 
the well known fact that without the supplementary register of voters or general one uh, you can the election is going to go with this present register but are you going to experiment the ballot paper as you've been trumpeting or you no 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 you because the the laws you know the laws you have know, not been changed the laws have not been changed so we cannot we so can't the use the same register law. and the same marble Yes, because it's just nine polling stations. It's not much. It's not a big, nine big area. Stations. It's about nine polling stations. So it's not big, you know. It's not big. It's not big. So that is why, like, uh, we we taking. Um, of course, the the campaign will be two weeks, but we we're going to we're going to definitely monitor it. You know, we're going to definitely monitor and make sure that things go rightly. You know. But because you said you don't know who might have picked the forms, we may not know whether the new parties have actually express any interest in like the GAP and the APP etc or independent candidates we don't know uh, we don't know because like you know it's 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 open even on the day, day of nomination people can Come collect forms <laughs> they can go. so that's what yeah so so, so uh, well of uh, course uh, the, the right people to, to know that yeah, 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 right uh, away uh, yeah i can no, give the you the right people are <laughs> the people who want to contest <laughs> I know, but uh, because we can't, but the ICC may be monitoring, we know. Yeah, because the thing is, like, as of now. Yeah, he could call you know, and they, they will give they a political say. statement, like, <laughs> just like, we are concerned. Okay. Yeah, I'm so, sure. Uh, you see, the, the thing is, like, we will definitely know exactly okay. those that are, people can even collect forms without. Without even, talk. yes, but without being serious. Yeah, about so we, we, we're waiting, yeah. and of course, yeah. um, it's just. Today is the 14th, so we have barely 16, yeah, for 16, 16 days for the nomination. Yeah, 16 days, so 16 a lot of things, yeah, a lot of things can happen. And, uh, okay, yeah, Amar, we, 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 mm-hmm. we, yeah. They, uh, and, and you, of course, they, they asked me to put the politicians. The corona, or fear of it, has disrupted uh, so many aspects of life. Sports, for example, our Nations Cup qualifiers between Gabon, between us and Gabon, for this month, have been cancelled. People are saying, wouldn't we consider, tell our politicians and the IEC now, perhaps for this period, they cancelled all planned political activities. For example, you're going to have a rally in Baribu on the 29th. Would you consider putting off for the corona? Um, based, based on the evidence, based on the advice, based on the preparedness of uh, the Gambia, I think I mean, uh, we should take as much precautions as possible to prevent uh, uh, infection, to prevent uh, the spread of it. Uh, but I think also uh, we cannot uh, forego the natural uh, advantages we have so far mm-hmm. uh, that uh, no reported uh, cases in the Gambia, um, some reported cases in Senegal and uh, in other West African countries. Uh, we should not um, uh, disrupt uh, our lives uh, for for something that uh, may not even be around because uh, sometimes this is what happens. You hear Ebola and your tourist season is completely destroyed and there has not been even one case of Ebola. Uh, those people made their own decisions. I mean, you cannot fault them. But if we don't also have any problem here, why should we disrupt our lives? I mean, of course, uh, we expect uh, as much preparedness as possible mm-hmm. at uh, all the border crossings and the availability of uh, test kits and things that can give us even more confidence that um, we don't so it have... Would, we, it we wouldn't make any sense to consider reviewing the electoral, electoral process, uh, i.e. this by-election in the wake of this fear about corona. I think I'll, I'll, I'll still concur with <laughs> Mr. Tal. I mean, because I mean, why do we have to stop? I mean, I think things are okay and uh, precautions have been taken, you know, in the borders. And many and people felt the precautions we have taken are not enough. We seem to play down, downplay the thing when actually we should be more serious with it. Like we, the government said they are not considering restricting travel from affected countries. Even America's superpower is doing that. So well, maybe right. maybe that question should be posed to the uh, government. Mm-hmm. Uh, your That's question. what I'm saying. I'm I saying uh, generally, what do are we all satisfied with the measures that have been taken? I think, as Amarita said, so far scientifically, what we know is that Corona is still beyond our borders. It hasn't entered the country yet. Mm-hmm. So if there should be any uh, robust measures to be taken or control measures to be taken, it should be mostly at the entries. Uh, within the country itself, life can go on as it is. 
entries, people who come, come from the affected countries people and enter. Who are and enter. Yeah, yeah. But we say we're not going to stop them. We're not going to stop them, but we can. I mean, it's the question about stopping them is something that we can discuss. <laughs> Joe, let's go back to but, the Yamina West. Any updates? Uh, the last, I mean, I want your last word on the preparations there. Are you, if I'm yourself with files there, is there any new thing we can learn from? On what? On the preparations from, from the IC's point of view. Yeah, yeah, because I think, um, you know, the last time we spoke about the reforms. Yeah, reforms, yes. And I think uh, a week or so, yes, we are, two weeks ago, yeah. um, fortunately, we, 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 we uh, MOJ, the Ministry of Justice, yeah. with the political parties and stakeholders and IEC, yeah. we had a two days uh, meeting. Okay. Yes. And, and what uh, came out? Yes, okay. uh, I think positively, uh, positively, almost everything came out except the issue of the independent candidates. Tell, yes. 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 tell us about and, it. Tell us about it. And demarcation. Tell us about what did you say. An issue came up because, like, uh, people, I mean, like, some of, some people were with the view that at this. Uh, politici- uh, political parties uh, pay one million to form, you know, political parties and the like, and then uh, and then they put up candidates, especially for presidential elections, uh, and then like in the laws as it is, you know, be it the old laws and the 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 the, the, uh, the new constitution, I mean, uh, the impending one, uh, there is still room for independent candidates. So people were of the view that I mean, some were of the view that. You know, it's not fair for political parties to pay one million and, and then contest, candidate. and the independent candidates will just wait at the corner, and just come. pay ten thousand as the fees are now. <laughs> so it was a heated debate. And, uh, I so finally, when did you come? Uh, finally, we said no because I said no representation because it's their it's their choice to be choice. as independent. independent. But uh, okay, demarcation came. Oh. It was a bit, uh, but I think demarcation, as we always tell people, it has been taken over by. Uh, the impending constitution, new constitution, because it's talking of 53. 53. Yeah, so only. it's talking of the same. So you cannot, but yet you still cannot create have more like, constituencies than. Yeah, because like, uh, because the, the the mandate is given to us. So if the mandate is given to us, there is room for. Yes. That's yes, right. and then we always, you know, I always tell people. You see, like, even in the new constitution. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the old one, 1997. Yeah. Like you know, section 88. Mm-hmm. So there, it had, it, it was amended. You see, usually, even if you, like, if you give powers, you know, you don't restrict. restrict the so if you restrict, then it means that we just have to do. So even we, with this like, what I mean by is, yeah. we just have to do a, a, a redistrib- redistribution. Okay. But like 88, you know, when we are moving from 48 to 53, we had to, we had to amend, amend. 88. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it means we have so to we, be always amending, 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 amending. Yeah. So I think when the con- I mean, some of these provisions have to be such that. When and uh, as and when, when the time arrives, you arise. No, but but so leg- leg- legally, legally, um, uh, Mr. Kuli, mm. is is always like that. Every year we also have an appropriation act mm. because uh, if you have a schedule that tells you the number the of number constituencies, of whenever you are doing your census, whenever you are doing your redistricting, uh, that uh, that uh, particular schedule has to change. change. I mean, it doesn't make any sense mm. to fix it yeah. in stone. Mm. But but that is the that's the nature of uh, the rule of law. What is controversial about creation of more constituents? Why why do you think there were there were conflicts? No, no, the problem is like you see like the uh, like for instance you have Serekuna West mm-hmm. with 40, 46 or so thousand voters, thousand voters. Mm-hmm. and then you have Jan with two thousand five thousand. So these are some of the things that we were trying to. So what do you do with you that? See, you you, you, you abolish Janjambure or annex it to another country or you divide Sarakuna? Yeah, Kuna those West. are some of the things. What are the best means? Those are some of the things we wanted to do. Yeah. But you see, like for instance, let me just take the capital city itself. Mm. We're 21,000 voters. Yes. When you go strictly, yeah. it should be one constituency. I see. I'm just giving it. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, when we went, when, when we went to the consultations, the people said over there, they burn. They must remain. Yeah, they three. Must and if you go to Fonyi, you say, want to cut yes, five. Yes, because Fonyi will say, now because we are in the opposition yes now you want to reduce want us to from reduce from so. from five to two five to two. now we we looked at no for yeah, we, yeah we looked at lrr mm. now we wanted to take 
two one uh, maybe uh, one of the yeah Kian. one of the jaras and then one of the kings put them together they wow. say no yeah. these are different yeah. people exactly you no know, like there was a time like i just <laughs> in well, like well, they are kings, so, we <laughs> now we have okay. so this is <laughs> what things you know and you so yeah so that is why <laughs> and the thinking is like the thinking is we leave things as they are right yes. now yes. i see and then after the after the electoral cycle yes then we start okay because as of now because we already have other issues to to to, to <laughs> grapple with yes. your things like uh, ballot paper yes you know and other issues yes. because like when you okay when you talk of ballot paper it was hotly debated yes. so but we give them the pros and cons and then we give them the differences you can have single ballot paper mm. you can have different, different because like senegal they have multiple multiple we are in even if you have 20 candidates each candidate will have one he is or he is our own ballot paper so the person will come pick pick the one that he wants mm-hmm. and vote with that and, and that's it yeah, and that's it okay, now they went ahead with the ballot paper yes because well, it's been likely. yes because the because person, because so. because you know what we are looking at mm-hmm. now the new yes the co- yeah. now it's it has to go to because J- moj is dealing with the laws it, it will go to, to well, it will go to parliament. it will go to parliament for discussion uh, bill and then it will. now listen it i think people have to you know we are not seeing mm-hmm. ballot marbles and the two goons they are perfect they are fine mm-hmm. they are fine the only problem we have mm-hmm. with the marbles is the number mm-hmm. of candidates is the number of candidates yes. that is necessitating this this migration yeah, well if we have two or three even five five candidates Recently. we don't have a problem Already. but with this opening with of the i mean the the, the political field yeah political field and the space mm. now now we have 14 political parties yes maybe next week we may have a 15 one. you said last week that we would have got one we still yes. don't yeah yeah it, it they are all they are, they are almost ready i know when their money just uh, drops oh, they are struggling with raising the million dollars yeah they are, some of them have money they know there are some technical issues nice. that we sometimes you know like we look at colors and things like oh, that okay. so, so we issues. may have 15 so, yeah we may have 15 by the end of the week or so now and two are already almost ready also so 17 yes, 16 so, yes and you know people are coming every time they're coming yeah. and then so the thing is like we said and then the new constitution says presidential election and then 137 of the constitution of the constitution that new constitution says national assembly should be held on the same the day same day as the presidential and then we have women's women yes they yeah, said women's every election should have Yeah, 14 women. So each 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 constituency we have each, each administrative each area two. Area have two candidates. Okay, that's three. Yes. Uh, on one day. Yes. And then you have the other one. The fourth election is the that one for the uh, disabled. Yeah. Okay. So you see. So you see with the logistics involved. Yeah. The logistics involved yeah. in conducting mm-hmm. those three using marbles and ballot papers. Could be just could, could be just could be just because the, like for instance If you if you have about let me just say even if I'm you have 14, 14 just 14 yeah. not talking of the independence independent. you have 14 then national assembly you have 14 or more okay and then the, the women of course you will have what yeah every region yeah every region so every political party every political party will what independence so every political party will nominate two, two. so, so have 24 to 30 candidates yeah. candidates yeah. only women yeah. so you have 14 14 28 So it means that you have 56 56 ballot drops. I'll give you an example. 56, 56 ballot drops for just one polling station. That's 56. No, in areas where I have where I, I just I always like to give um, uh, a place like Ibotan Mosque. Okay. Yeah. Mm, with six polling stations. Yeah. Now with this impending registration yeah. before the elections, we may have about seven or seven eight polling eight. stations. Yes. Yeah. So if so you have 45 polling stations, 45 bucks for each polling station, that's time, a huge. That's times, that's, times six. That would be night in, in a polling station. That would so be night That night is if we hold all the elections at once. That, that is what is in the new constitution. That's what the yeah, new but constitution here is. The, yeah, the constitution is on a process. If that is inconvenient, we, that can still be discussed. But my point is, those the, the, the inconvenience that comes with using the, uh, what do you call it, the marbles. marbles. Does that inconvenience outweigh the disadvantages that we may have with paper ballot system, considering 
the illiteracy level. That is, that is what I beg to differ. I always, you always try. Well, no, there's a difference between being educated and being aware. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Yeah, but even that awareness level. Which awareness level? The awareness level that gives for, you so much for, confidence. For the, for the ordinary man to how be able you, to understand how to choose how his to choose or her choice from the lot of candidates by picking the picture or a card. Yeah, it's a picture. It's a, it's a picture. It's a card picture. Yes. It's a picture. I, I think really, I mean, uh, sometimes when we have these discussions, yeah. we have to be pragmatic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That we have some tools in the 21st century that did not exist in the yeah. 1960s. Yeah, 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 yeah. To make things easier. Yes. yes, and the, the level of awareness yes. and the exposure, we have all kinds of WhatsApp, WhatsApp groups and there. postings. And, you know, I think uh, to assume that people will not be aware mm -hmm or will not be able to exercise their franchise effectively, mm. uh, I think is an assumption that, that has not been borne out by the reality. Mm -hmm. uh, almost all our internal uh, democracy processes mm -hmm. are done by ballot paper. Yes. Uh, internally, yes. yes. Yes, when we have our Congress. Yeah, yeah. caucuses and all those things. And even no, the but, famous but, but 2016. The the no, no, no. There is the you just pick a ballot box, empty, uh, sorry, ba empty ballot, and they count. Uh, and you have boxes, different boxes. You know? No, no, no. It's I just mean, one box. Yeah. Oh, the parties use one box. No, no, they, 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 no, no. We we use two boxes. That's the two boxes. Yeah. It still doesn't but, kick away. No, no. But but uh, the point is this: mm -hmm. all the tools at our disposal yeah. now. Uh -huh. How many uh, ways can we appeal to the? vast majority of the electorate yeah. so that they can exercise their franchise. Yeah. I don't think there should be only one way, one strictly. Way. Yeah. At this same uh, uh, meeting, yeah. we talked very extensively about diaspora voting. Mm -hmm. How do you make that uh, yeah. possible yeah. effectively? Because a lot of people forget this, that even when you are in the Gambia and you are not on the ele electoral register, yeah. you don't vote. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So even if you are a full citizen, everybody knows that Lavin Cham, if you don't have a voter's card, in the 2016, quite a few of my friends, don't they've misplaced their, their, their voter's, voter's card. card. Yeah. My wife could not even find her own voter's card. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, I mean, it's about that also, mm -hmm. that the process is uh, not only uh, on the day of the voting, mm -hmm. but all the process leading to it mm -hmm. must not only be convenient, as uh, Nima is saying, mm -hmm but must be based on an informed consent okay. so that you can exercise your franchise effectively. What is but your beef about uh, paper ballots? I think uh, the Gambia should now go beyond what has been happening in this country ah, so, for, so for years. A consensus the best yeah, there was a consensus. is for us to go. There, there was a, there, there, yes, it was he is in the interparty yeah. committee. And, and, he was and the, they are always uh, this is the duty uh, trying of the, yes, uh, this is the duty of the, ahead, of, the, yeah. of the political parties to synthesize their people. Nice. And we have the National Council for Civic Education. We have the IEC. Also, they are stakeholders to come together and synthesize the people of whatever changes or amendment has been made so in the electoral process. So where is coming from? Right? So they are not ready for it. The argument, it's I would tell you, it's coming, coming from journalists like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, the yeah, argument yeah, is also <laughs> coming from. Can I, may I, may I say something? Yes, go ahead. I think the, where the argument also is, 2016 have really instilled confidence in the use of the, the marble. Especially How? with the no, no, it's no, a sport no. Count. it's a sport county, yeah, it's and it's going to be the same process. It's the sport county. It's just it's going to be the same process, whether it's ballot paper or it's marble. It's going to be the same process. It's still going to be and yeah, and the and same and process. And yes, this, and it's yeah, like this thing is like to be able, any any quicker or any more effective. Than yeah, it's going county. to be quicker. What are you going to do? Because the thing is, what you do? Because we told them, like like it's not going to be eight hundred in each polling station as before. No. The thinking is. 500 at police. No, not even 500. Between three to 400. Well, have a lot of no, police. between yes, we're going to have a lot of polling stations. And that's yes, that's why you. That is a good for. thing. That's a good thing because we because the other day I said earlier and then people misquoted me. I said no, we're starting at eight, mm. and we finish at five. Yes. So we do the counting before it is dark, so everybody knows what happens before dark. Because the thing is, if you have three to 400. Yeah. You will vote if you come at eight o'clock, even before two. More, like even Nigeria, if, let me tell you, and in Nigeria they vote. Are saying Saturday yeah. should be. A yeah. Now, day yeah, day yeah. Day we have well, we discuss all those things. Days, yeah. But yeah, we discuss all those things. You know, yeah. we're going to have it because what say, time. whatever we're doing is like we're doing something very oh, good. Yeah, you know, right, something yeah. good to enhance you know the process and things like that. So all these things were discussed, okay. and then we we we. No, you see, it's even easier to count that because the thing is like you sort first. 
Hmm? You yeah. because you close pools and then you know exactly how many how many ballot papers you've issued, just like the marbles, because okay. you count everything. Yeah. So you will know exactly how many ballots are in the in the in the in the uh, in, in the ballot box. Yeah. Then for instance, like you open in the presence of all the politi- all the yeah. political parties, and then you you show so, this. So there'll be one man, one person. Yes. And yes. All the agents and observers are yes. watching. They are watching. So I pick Almame's cut. No, I pick. Uh, I'll pick when it Al-Mame. is stick, when it is Almame. Uh, they put it there. Yeah, they put huh? it here. Yes. No. I'm just giving an example. <laughs> and then Nima, <laughs> you put. <laughs> huh? an and then Lamin, you put. So you sort it out like we, okay. and then you, you you count. You count. Then after counting, just like the 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 the, 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 the marble, yes. and you put Sunday. everything again, again. in in tamper evident bar and sealed for a recount or for yeah. petition. Oh, so it's the same. That's not faster than how you count the marble. <laughs> no, it's no. not going to be faster, but it's, it's okay. Because if you have, you're going to have what? You're going to have multiple elections. Exactly. Because with the marbles, you cannot. Yeah. You cannot have multiple elections on the same day. No, that one. She but here now, because the, the, the thing is, the what is going to happen is, let me come. Box. Yes, what is going to happen so also? One big thing, you can have 10 candidates. Yes. So yes, and the other thing is, Lamin, is we have holding elections on the same day. It's going to what? It's going to reduce cost. Cost. Mm? Because one, p- the same persons, the same officials that you're going to contact are going to do these three. So what is the, the role of the political parties? Is it to go to Badibu and show the picture from the very beginning? Yes. The picture yes. of them. Yeah, they'll have yeah, what? For, for they'll for have the, the arrangement of. Yes, they yeah, will yeah, have the arrangement. And the national assembly is yes. the final vetter yes. of yes. that law. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all these political considerations, obviously, they will uh, bring to bear on mm. these uh, yeah. discussions. Mm. Okay. And finally, uh, when we have a process, it is going to be uh, people's uh, own process. Yes. It's going to be driven by the people. Mm. Yeah, and I, I expect that, you know, uh, uh, moving forward, uh, this whole electoral process, mm. we will try and modernize it as much as possible mm. because we cannot be... Uh, doing a lot of things, our most basic uh, transaction financially, we do it online. All of these should be options by vote, uh, yeah. by post. All of these should be options, especially if we want to enfranchise the diaspora because they have already gotten their citizenship uh, cleared. But you know, we, we really need to uh, look at this that way, not it is a, a bundle of problems, it is a, an opportunity to move into the 21st century as a a progressive country, you sure. know, but uh, you know, we, your your studio is on a street that doesn't have a name. Exactly. These are all things that uh, our political discourse should uh, be talking about. And earlier in the news, you did not talk about this uh, groundbreaking BBC documentary that ah. your your standard uh, newspaper carried we carry. and, and a and denial of the, of, 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 of the minister the, of yeah. the interior of complicity and, and, and i and think it's, it's extremely important environment uh, yeah yeah but then of course we can pack all these things here and we have to take some <laughs> items how, do, how do we just jump from elections to <laughs> to, to wood get to no no I, 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 i'm just trying <laughs> to uh, I'm make trying a to say we pick we pick uh, Topical issues. We will, we will of course get this other topic spill over next next week. Also. Yes, yeah, and I mean one other but thing also. Last le- one le- on le- issue yeah, we are, we are we are going. So we are we are getting prepared. As I'm speaking to you on Monday, yeah. from Monday to Thursday, we're going to have a bridge program. Now this is uh, a training for our staff, not only like the directors. Are, so everybody, even our receptionists. Uh-huh, we'll yeah, yeah, because like you see, we are also trying to move to a, a another pedestal. Wherein, like, uh, even you are a receptionist or a secretary or in finance, you must know elections. Okay. Yeah, so we have, with the help of um, IFS, like, um, the consultant is here. We've, I mean, he helped us with our strategic plan. We're almost done. Now it's bridge. So we're going to be training our staff, you know, from Monday to all the, our regional staff and everybody from Monday. And these are some of the things that we want to do. We, we, these are all in the plans. So that at least you know our engagements with stakeholders. So we'll be we'll be organizing you know things like this, okay. you know like maybe on conflict resolution. Now here it's going to be that this bridge is going to be centered on civic and voter education and then the voter registration. So come near the referendum, we're going to organize you know something like that. So you know like um, as I said, you see we at the IEC we we want the process as uh, Almami said that yeah. you know it it has to be driven. We just conduct. If you conduct the, or if you organize the elections and people don't come, it's useless. <laughs> so it has to be like the election is the business of everybody. So we want all Gambians to be. We want at a time with the election. I mean, like the, the awareness to grow in such a way that even like 
we'll, we may have elections without even security. security. People can be their yeah. own security because you know exactly what 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 what, what ought to be done, done is done. You know, is done in the right way. Right. Yeah. So these are this is this is where we want. So we cannot do this alone. We need the collaboration of all stakeholders, especially the political parties who are our major stakeholders. Exactly. So we have the political parties, we have the CSOs, and then of course we have, you know, the journalists, you know, so that at least you know together we can drive you know the electoral pro process forward. All right, mm. Joseph Kony, director of training and communications at the uh, IEC. Thank you very much. And uh, Party of Bangle, who comes from the National Reconciliation Party, and Mami Fandin Tal from the United Democratic Party. And of course, uh, you see, there's this small matter about Nima being nominated for some award. They call it Woman of the Year tonight, happening courtesy of Fatu Network. So Nima is one of the people nominated for Woman of the Year. There, there's uh, Jenna Baz, Rohi Malik Lo, and who's the other lady? Ajit Kumbar Dafe, and uh, who else? Those are the ones. So this night, uh, the, uh, the hours, they will pick one. Uh, we are hoping it's Nima. <laughs> And who's that? I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. on behalf of, uh, I'm sure viewers from Kerfatu, uh, Irojima has a lot of shooters online. <laughs> <laughs> so they will be rooting for her, I know. <laughs> They'll be voting for her. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. I'm sure you are a very proud brother. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Unfortunately, yeah. they are all but the they are very book shooters. Yeah. Oh no, I'm gonna I'm not gonna let you go to Berry Book. <laughs> <laughs> you know the Berry Bookers have all the money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so all the best in your mind. Yeah. The hours tonight and uh, this is this is about it and the brunch this afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for being us wherever you're being us from. I'm loving jam saying goodbye. So okay. Go. Uh, yes. <laughs>
and customer satisfaction. Miss V Designer Outlet is the number one quality and affordable stop shop for all your needs. Get your evening dresses, suit and ties, office wears for both ladies and gentlemen, beach wears, sport wears, pure leather shoes for men, quality belts, bags, heels for all beautiful ladies, original perfumes, accessories and a lot more. Find us at Kololini Road opposite Gaddafi Mosque at the Aqua Preacher Station or call us on 295-3411 or 764-2486. Miss B Designer Outlet. Shop right, look good. Natural beauty, that melanin dripping, 
we do have stuff for you as well. And when you see skincare products like Nyung Tichu Vitamin, I'm going to show you In fact, sir, last commercial being the phone, what are you going to do with your Nine A grade, right now. Wow. We do have bundles as well. Hair. What are you going to do with your hair? You're going to do with your hair. Wow. What are you going to do with your hair? Book on that classic suitcase, you know, Dr. A. Samsonite, when they in the any brown of suitcases, though, other than Samsonite. Come, Lima de Warek, Bo Ege Airport, Dury Samsonite, the Amnula Holly. Wow. Gendela, like, wow. Um, skin, Chimumlin, you get a hammy, like skincare products, Chimumlin, you get a hammy, you get Dr. Mid Bentate Mitzi Aidala, Manway, man, like skincare, moist, my specialty. I'm going to take in Busa Harkanam Regle, Lord of Mujak. I mean, um, Patricia Reiner, Kiwi Eye, the whole range, Lighten Up Gold, um, Tomatine. I mean, the list can just go on and on and on and on. Lipolo han regluy taral jigin la, ki yoyu rek la nyodok. Skin Care Plus, nek, emu yin si Gambia rek, nyunga United States, nyungi Gambia fi. Be pare, bude yangi anywhere in Europe, mune la ku meal. Within three days rek, nyeti fan rek, nga jot say diw. Emu yin si lo rek, den la consult tami. Bala nyin la jay diw, they need a free consultation for what exactly you know what you need to do. They need to know what you need to do. Perfumes, you know, fragrances, men's shirts, um, accessories. We do do dresses as well. We do blouses. I mean, we do shoes. Name it, we do them. Skin Care Plus 2020 is our year of perfection. Zero tasks. Who make any real me fit? Can what if I tasks? Can what if I am problem with product? Can I? Can what if I am problem with picture? Because I'm not afraid to make new law. The plastic fee.